an elegant cavalier. His face at once energetic and gentle. His eyes of a blue as limpid as the Mediterranean in the sun. That is how Emile Zola described Edouard Manet, the irresistibly charming godfather of Impressionism. Why wouldn't women be infatuated with him? Finally, let's talk about the Impressionists. This is Berta Morisot. How to begin. Edouard Manet was a painter. He never considered himself a member of the Impressionist movement, but he did have a style characterized by loose brush strokes, the simplification of details, and suppression of transitional tones. So definitely moving toward Impressionism. Berta Morisot was also a painter. Twist! Now she is definitely an Impressionist, actually one of my all-time favorites. What is an Impressionist, you ask? Impressionism is characterized by small, thin brush strokes with an emphasis, and this is important, on light and its changing qualities. Here's some of Berta's pieces. She was really good. She was born in 1841, and while it was not common for women to be professional artists, it was common to educate well-bred young women in the techniques and study of painting. So it would be lovely to tell you how Berta navigated the mid-1800s male-centered art world, but unfortunately she was so female and never pleased with her work. She was never good enough for herself. She destroyed pretty much all of her own artwork before 1869. I feel this deeply. So Manet became acquainted with Marisot in 1868. We know from her correspondence to him that she was pretty much in love. And we know from the way he painted her that it was pretty much mutual. Now, Manet was often causing a bit of a scandal with his models. He painted them in ways that left Parisian society openly critical of their immodesty. This painting he did, Olympia, which we'll have to circle back to at some point, left his model, Victorine Meur, very open to rude gossip. After this painting, Victorine was called a female gorilla and a redhead of perfect ugliness. So Berta Morisot knew what she was getting into modeling for Edouard. Still, she became his favorite subject, and Edouard painted her more than he painted any other woman. And sure enough, when Manet exhibited The Repose in 1873, Berta became the most scorned woman in the city. This painting was called A Horror! Critics said they got seasickness. She has a casual pose. She has an exposed foot. No matter, Manet continued to paint her. It was thought that he was courting her through his paintbrush, taking time and care with his paintings of Berta to resist sexual tension. George Moore wrote in his memoirs that Berta would have married Edouard if he hadn't already been married. Heartbreak. As his muse, he could absolutely have taken her for his mistress, but we don't think he did. What happened instead? Edouard suggested that Berta marry his younger brother, Eugene. So Marisol became part of the Manet family after all. Eugene was a painter as well, but never achieved the success that his brother and his now wife achieved. He spent much of his life supporting his wife's career. I think that's really kind. Even though, given her attachment to his brother, their union is sometimes described as a marriage of convenience. Good job, Eugene. Here's a portrait of him that was done by Degas. All these guys knew each other. Here's one Berta did of Eugene and his daughter in their garden in 1883. So this doesn't seem like an unhappy ending. While Berta continued to paint until her death at the age of 54, the rules of propriety forbid her from modeling after she was married. However, Manet did paint her one last time in 1874. She looks aside, her fingers are curled to reveal 
the wedding ring.